So anyway, so welcome to Elevate. We are continuing this wonderful series of, what's the title of our series? The, your Best Year Yet. So can you ask your seatmate, are you having your best year this 2019? Are you expecting a lot? Are you praying for breakthroughs in your life? So I don't know what your plans are this 2019. I know you have dreams. You have some hopes. You want to achieve some great things this year. And my prayer is, of course, I hope you do reach that dream this year. So, but whatever happens, again, that's why we have this series because the theme of this series is this one. Can we read this together? If we want to have a great year, we have to be connected to the only person who can give us the best. And this, uh, in our second message, this is going to be special because it's not just going to be speaking. Actually, I'm going to introduce this second topic, but I'm going to call my disciple later on to share our message for this afternoon. So, but before that, can we just join our hearts? Let's pray and let's commit this time to the Lord and let's bow down our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us here. I pray, Lord, that as we hear your message, um, as I introduce this, Lord, and as Darwin speaks later on with this topic, I pray that you would just override our preparations, that you speak to all of us. I know it's your desire that we have a wonderful year. And every year there will be challenges, there will be trials, and that's normal, that's part of it. But I pray that as we listen, we will know what we need to do, and of course, we will abide in you. So thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so this is the theme. If we want to have a great year... We have to be connected to the only person who can give us the best. And last week, our topic was about what? Peace. So can you ask your seatmate, medyo peaceful ka na ba ngayon? Medyo may peace ka na? Okay ka na ba? O medyo magulo pa rin? In other words, we, uh, we asked the question last week, how can you have peace in the midst of stress? Because the reality is, you and I, we're gonna experience some stress this year. Maybe right now, I think some of you are experiencing some stress at school. May assignments na. Tama? May mga requirements, projects. May exam na next month. Sino mag-exam na next month? This month, sino may exam? Come on. Okay, so st- that's normal. That's part of it. So how do you experience peace in the midst of those things? Or maybe for some of you guys, it's not about exams, but you are already experiencing difficult people. Meron na ba? May mga difficult people na ba around you, around the... The, uh, around Elevate, around your D group, maybe around your school. Someone uh, you thought wala na sa school, pero nandiyan pa rin siya. Okay. So maybe those things are happening already. But we started with this one because I believe God wants us to have peace in the midst of stressful situation. And as we learned last week, that it's because of Jesus Christ, the peace that He gives to us, it, it's really different. But here's the thing, okay? Let me just clarify that. I just want to add, add a little bit because I realize that there's a difference between what the world offers when it, th- when it comes to peace and what God offers. I know some of you have heard that already. Na, How come, Kuya Martin, my other friends who doesn't believe in God, my other friends, na, they're not that too serious with Jesus. I mean, they go to church, but they're not too serious. Medyo peaceful naman sila. How come they all also experience peace? And then, ikaw, you're also saying that God or Jesus Christ is offering this peace. What's the difference between that and this one? And know here's what I realized. Because some people would say that, I don't have God, I'll just have to meditate and I'll, I have peace. I don't believe in God, but I'll just, you know, eat something and I have peace in my life. You will have friends like that. Or some people would say, I, I believe in God, I'm not that serious with Him, but I can have peace. I'll just relax a little bit, escape a little bit and I have peace. And they do experience a little bit of peace. But what's the difference? You know what I realized what the big difference is? Here's the thing. Both of those peace here on earth, it seems na medyo pareho. And you can say it's medyo pareho. Kasi nga, I pray to the Lord, I believe in God, I experience this comfort, this, this, this comfort in my heart, and I experience also peace. Good. Some people, I don't believe in God, but I'll just pause, I'll just keep quiet, I'll just meditate, and I also experience peace. Somehow, same. You know what's the big difference? Yung peace na offer ni God is forever. Meaning to say, Yung peace here on earth that you will experience, medyo temporary. Let's say you have peace right now. Because let's say someone doesn't believe in God. Like meditate siya, okay, peaceful na. And then after a few days, pwede ba magkaroon ng problem? Pwede. So meditate siya ulit, okay. But the difference with the peace that comes from the Lord is here, yung peace na in-offer niya, minsan mo wala because we disobey, we go away from Him, we rebel against Him, pero pwede mabalik. 
Pero once that He comes back again and we go with Him in heaven, it's going to be forever. That's the difference. That's why we encourage us that for us to have the best year yet, we need to have the best person and be connected to that best person. He's not just offering peace, but today our topic will be fruitfulness. Yan. Can you say that to your seatmate? Fruitfulness. One, two, three, go. Fruitfulness. Do you know that God wants us to have a fruitful year? But what do you mean by fruitfulness? So we're going to explain that later on. But let's read this passage first. In John 15, verse 5. One, two, three, go. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is, it, he, uh, it, is that bears, he, it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words, if we're connected to the only, the best person who can give us the fruitful kind of life, He wants us. He's going to give that to us, that fruitful kind of life. And that's why our topic for this afternoon is quite simple. Let's read this together. One, two, three, go. Abide in Him. Bakit? Sabi niya sa verse eh. Sabi ni Jesus yan eh. Whoever abides in me and I in Him, He it is that bears much fruit. If we're connected to Jesus Christ, you and I will bear much fruit. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, abide in Him. One, two, three, go. Abide in Jesus. What does that mean? Another passage in verse 8, three verses after that. But this, my Father is glorified. Imagine this. It's the joy of our Heavenly Father that we live a fruitful life. That you bear much fruit, so prove to be my disciples. But what does God mean by fruitfulness? Because again, if you mentioned ko kanina, there's a difference between Peace in the world standards and peace sa standard ni God. There's also a difference between peace sa world standard ay, or fruitfulness sa standard ng world and fruitfulness sa standard ni Jesus. For example, this one. Fruitfulness in the world standard. Paano malalaman that at the end of the year, masasabi mo, wow, fruitful tong 2019 na to. Wow, blessed ako ngayon 2019 na to. Ang saya nito. How do you know that you're fruitful? Can you ask your seat with? How do you know? How do you know that you're fruitful? Paano mo masasabi na fruitful ka? Sa so world standard, ito. Majority of the people that you will ask, those people na whether they, they, they believe in Jesus or not, majority of them, this is what they will say. For me to have a fruitful year, kailan high grades. Yan. Tama ba? Kailan high grades. So dapat mataas ang grades ko ngayong school year na to. Kung hindi mataas ang grades ko, parang palpa ako this year. For some people na grade conscious, meron ba dito mga grade conscious? May katabi ka bang grade conscious? Yan. Ayaw na bumabagsak. Ayaw na below line, line of nine. Ayaw, ayaw ng below line of nine. Di ba may mga ganun? Kailangan 91 above, okay? Pag, 90, pag 89 yan, I'm a failure. Okay? May mga ganun. Some people are like that. So, grades, high grades. For some people, that's what they... Now again, I'm not saying, ah, baka kasi ma-misquote nyo ako. So, okay lang pala na hindi mataas ang grades going more. I'm not saying that, Okay? Parents, man. Okay, lang, ma, ako this year. No. But some people, this is what they say. For some people, naman, connected to high grades is success. Kailangan successful ako, whatever your definition of success. For some people, ang success sila is manalo kami ng championships sa intrams. Or maging best Dota player ako of this year for my school. Or whatever that is, ang galing galing ko sa, sa project namin. Or ako yung number one sa Twitter namin sa barkada. <laughs> I don't know. Okay? So whatever your definition of success, pwede yun. Whatever that is, some people, that's, that's what fruitfulness is for them. If I'm successful in this area of my life, wow, thank you Lord. Let's say varsity ka ng badminton, varsity ka ng table tennis, varsity ka ng chess, varsity ka sa, sa, sa kakakain, whatever that is. Kahit anong varsity mo. So if you're the best in that area, wow, okay, I am fruitful. So success. For some people naman, their, their fruitfulness is about money. But I think a lot of people, this is what fruitfulness is for them. I'm a, I have a fruitful life on 2019 because ang dami kong pera, because yung parents namin successful sa business, because nabili ko lahat ng gusto ko, because wala kami naging problema sa pera, I think that's the definition of fruitfulness. Pero yun ba talaga ang fruitfulness in the standards of God? Some people naman, relationships. Maybe this is the year na magkaka-boyfriend ka or kaka-girlfriend. We don't encourage that. Mag-aral ka muna mabuti. But let's just say, okay, let's just say, Diba? Let's just say, yes, fruitful tong year na to pag sinagot niya ako. Yan, okay? Diba, Jimmy? Okay, medyo seryoso si Jimmy. Okay, fruitful tong year na to kapag, uh, kapag wala siyang naging boyfriend or naging girlfriend kasi naghintay siya at hindi rin ako nag-express ng love ko sa kanya basta naghintay din ako. Okay, so pwede rin. Pwede rin. Yun ang, yun ang definition mo ng fruitful kind of life. And, and, and for some people naman, ito, 
actually, a lot of people are like this right now. For them, fruitfulness is basta happy ka. Di ba narinig mo na yan? Sa Facebook, sa Instagram mo, may mga videos na sina- nagsasabi, as long as you're happy and you're not hurting anyone, then you have a blessed year. But is that what fruitfulness is? When Jesus says, abide in me and you will have a fruitful life, yun ba ang definition niya ng fruitfulness? You see, the problem with these things is this. Let's say you have high grades this year. But there can be other issues in your life that will make your year not fruitful. Let's say you become successful. You have the money. But then there was a sickness in your family that somehow doesn't make you fruitful. Let's say sinagot ka ng crush mo for 10 years. Six years old ka palang crush mo na siya. Diba? But then something else happened with your mom, with your dad. Does that define a fruitful year? Or let's just say naging happy ka. But how long will that happiness last. That's why our topic for today is Abide in Him. Now to know more about this, let me call on our main speaker. This is just an introduction for this afternoon. Let's all welcome Mr. Darwin Arete. What's up Elevate? Good afternoon. So I'm your not, not your host for this afternoon. I'm going to be speaking on abiding in Christ. So I hope you brought your Bibles with you. We're going to look into John Chapter 15. So, who brought their Bibles? Bible. Digital Bibles. Ooh, parang ako lang ata dito, ah. You guys brought your Bibles? Yeah. Alright, so turn your Bibles to John chapter 15. And we're going to talk about abiding in Christ. Who wants to live a fruitful year this year? Parang siguro 10 lang, ah. Who wants to live a fruitful year this year? Yon. So, this is how we could have the best year for this year, if we abide in Christ, to have a fruitful life. And it says here in John 15, 5, what Kuya Marty read earlier. Let's read this together. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is the bears that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So it's very simple, right? Very simple yung nakasabi sa Bible. Abide in me, and you and He will abide in us. Diba? Parang it's so common sense. Now for us, for us to have a fruitful life, we abide in Christ. But it's so hard to do it. Eh? No? And we're gonna, um, we're gonna go through that. We're gonna go through that um, in this, af- this afternoon. And you, did you guys know, in John 15, abide comes out 11 times. And during that time, you know, if, um, if a writer would repeat word, he puts emphasis. And in John chapter 15, Abide appears um, 11 times in this chapter. And what does abide mean? So I was looking into the Greek word of abide. Abide means, uh, abide in Greek is me no. Can you guys say that? Me no. Me no. You want ice cream? Me no. Sorry, so far in court, I just had to put that there. Anyways, um, me no. So it, it means to remain, to abide, to stay. And dito, abide in this chapter it's a, conti- it's a present participle. So, did you guys learn that now in English class? Present participle? Alright. So, present participle means continuous condition. It doesn't mean na parang, okay, choice ko lang to abide. No, you have to abide already. If you are, in the, if you are part of Christ, you are abiding in Him. It, it goes with it na. Once you are with Christ, you abide in Him. Here, let's, and the ba yung question natin, what is a fruitful life? Now, what is a fruitful life? A fruitful life shows this kind of life here in the Bible. It says here in 2 Peter 3 verse 18, let's read this, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our, of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. eternity. Amen. And another, another verse here, it says here, Matthew 28 verse 19 to 20. I think we know this verse by heart. So go therefore, let's read this together. Go therefore, Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And you know what? I, get, um, I was looking, you know, I was asking myself, what is a fruitful life? And through these two verses, um, I concluded, a fruitful life is to live a life like Christ, in character and in mission that He calls you to do. So two things, you know, I, I mean, this is one thing. We are to be like Christ. 
Diba? God, Christ saved us for us to be like Him. In, in what? In His character, the way He walks, the way He talks, and also in mission. What, where does He call you? Would it be in, in campus work, um, to be a lawyer, to be a doctor, or whatnot? Diba? This, this is what He wants you to be. Diba? He wants you to be connected to Him in whatever field He wants you to be. So, this, another question How do I be fruitful? Diba? How do I live a fruitful life? You know, this, this whole year, we're going to have a lot of you know, challenges and a lot of siguro mga heartbreaks. You know, we have that. But how do we live a fruitful life? In John 15, Jesus talks about a parable of the vine and the branches. Did you guys hear that story now, the vine and the branches? All right, so the vine and the branches. So I, I want to show you an illustration now. This is an illustration of what a vine looks like and how there are branches and there is a fruit. All right. So for us, I want you guys to keep this illustration. Okay. Look in, look at this um, picture and just keep this in mind. We're gonna go back into this illustration in this message. So again, the message and our topic for this afternoon is we have to abide in Him. So una, how do we abide? How do we live a fruitful life? First is that we have to acknowledge Christ. All right. Let's go back. We have we have to acknowledge Christ. All right. So first. And foremost, in the first verse in chapter 15, it says here, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Chapter 2, ev- uh, verse 2, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, and it may bear more fruit. Three, already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Four, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. This is such a common sense um, verse, you know. For for a fruit, for a fruit to grow, it has to be connected to the vine, right? For example, I brought an example here. um, This flower. Thank you, Angel. This is her flower. I've just borrowed it. But this flower, plastic, okay? So, but let's just imagine this is a real flower. Okay, let's imagine this is a real flower. For example, you know, you're going to give someone a flower. Diba? You're going to give your mom a flower because it's Mother's Day. Diba? So we discourage a um, ano, relationship. So you give to your mom a flower. For example, you give a flower to your mom. And the thing is, it's not connected na to, the, to, the, to, the, to, to the tree or to the, to the root. right? So if you take it out and you leave it there for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, the flower starts to die. The petal starts to fall. Diba? And this is why I want you guys to notice that for in order for the fruit or for the flower to grow, it has to be connected to the vine. It has to be connected to the source. That is why, number one, how do we live a fruitful life this year? We have to acknowledge Christ. We have to acknowledge Christ. Why? Because He is the source of it. He is the source that we will live a fruitful life. We will, here's the source of the fruitful, for us to live a fruitful life. Here, Christ is the source of of the fruits you will produce this year. There is no way you will produce fruit if you are not connected with the vine. So important, talaga, we are connected with the vine. Ask your seatmate, are you connected in Christ? Yo, and that is what we have to ask every morning. Are we connected with Him? Diba? Are we doing what He wants us to do? Diba? And the second thing, how do we live a fruitful life? The second thing is cooperate when He prunes us. Diba? In this chapter, He talks about pruning. Christ talks about pruning. And in verse 2, he says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may may bear more fruit. So I had a chance um, this December, I had a vacation. I went to the States, um, visited a family there, and we went to a vineyard. It was my first time going into a vineyard, expecting, you know, um, I was expecting na daming grapes, you know, yung makita niyo sa pictures, yung mga, um, you know, just uh, a series of trees that are, that produce um, grapes. But I, I went there in the winter, and what I saw was this, literally something like that. And I was like, w- w- where's, the, where's the grapes? Diba? Parang, it was dead. The, the vineyard was really dead. The trees were dead because it was really cold. And I asked, you know, we went to, we went to one of the wi- um, wineries there, and they asked, so what do you do when, you know, the plants are dead. You know, it's a very important part of the year for this kind of vineyard. 
Now, every time when it's winter, what they do is they prune. They have to prune this vineyard. They have to prune this thing because in order for it to grow more. So what they do, when it's dead, during this time when it's dead, the gardener, he has to prune, um, he has to prune the branches for it to grow more. So very important. That, that's why I was thinking, why did Christ use this illustration of, you know, vine and branches? Because we could relate to it as well. You know, as Christians, God prunes us. God prunes us so we could grow more fruit. And sometimes pruning, pruning hurts. Pruning hurts so much because pruning, you know, another word for pruning, he cuts it, you know. And it, it hurts to be, uh, com- who, who's parang accidentally cut themselves here before? Diba? Parang it hurts. If you get cut, it hurts. And like us as Christians, as Christians, we, we, we go under th- the process of pruning. And because of pruning, we grow more fruit. And, you know, ganito yung, um, after the process of pruning, you know, there's a beautiful uh, result after it, you know. It bears much fruit. And like us, we go through pruning. So why does, why does God do that? God takes away harmful things in our life in order for us to grow and mature in our faith. And I was thinking, what are some things that, that Christ prunes in our life? You know, some things are relationships. God prunes relationships. So God takes away some relationships that are not good for you. Because he has something better for you. You know, I just want to share a story to you guys. Um, before I became a campus missionary, um, I had different plans in my life. You know, I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, become rich. I wanted to be in politics. And I wanted to have a beautiful home, beautiful wife. You know, and, and, you know, going, growing up when I was in college, I entered this relationship. And, you know, I thought this relationship was, you know, a really great relationship. For me, I, when I started it, you know, I, I brought her to Christ. I mean, no, it wasn't, I mean, I brought her to Elevate. I didn't, I mean, you know, dapat si Lori talaga yung mag-convict sa kanila. Pero, but, you know, I brought her to Elevate thinking that, you know, we could start, you know, probably that would, this would work out. So I brought her to Elevate. I introduced her to my family. But eventually, you know, I, I did not follow God, Christ's will. I, I didn't follow Christ's rules in what a relationship should be. And what happened was, you know, I, I akala ko this was it na. You know, akala ko this was the girl that I would marry in the future. But you know what? God took her away. And I was like, Lord, why did you take someone so beautiful in my life? Someone that, you know, I really cared about. Lahat, in effort ko lahat. Why did you take that away? And I realized, you know, later on, Christ had a better relationship for me. Christ gave me someone better. And you know what? That person is himself you know so you laugh you may laugh but you know very si Lord, si God talaga God talaga is everything and you know akala nyo nandito siya eh, no no but he she she um he Christ is here among us and you know I was telling my D group um last week I was telling my D group last week na you know what guys I had this feeling you know while I was in uh vacation with my family Parang sinabi ko sa sarili ko, Lord, kahit okay na kung wala akong girl, basta ikaw kasama lang kita. Diba? So, I mean, grabe, if you knew me siguro three years ago, five, four years ago, siguro yung mga barkado ko dati sabi nila, yeah, right, Darwin. Pero you know what, like right now, like this whole year, last year, just being in ministry, just enjoying Him, sobrang ganda. And that is why sometimes Christ prunes certain things in your life. Because he has so much things in store for you that are better. That's why sometimes he prunes relationships. Others, he prunes studies. You know, sometimes you may, what? Ano yung studies? But if you niya, titanggalin niya yung study, mawawala ka ng, ano, wala, mawawala ka ng school. Hindi. No, for example, um, ano yung mga examples dito? Um, samples in studies. Like, for example, ako, another example was, Christ pruned the way Siguro I would hang out with friends because um, I compromise in my studies. Something like that, you know. Some things, you know, that are not good for you, he really prunes. Another, another thing is money. He prunes out money. So that, you know, for us, hindi tayo ma-enslave ng money. Diba? Another one is career. So these things, you know, God prunes. And it's a difficult process. 
Pruning is a difficult process. But, you know, when we go back to that vineyard, you know, it looks so dead. But eventually, after a couple of months, you see that it produces a beautiful and wonderful fruit. Diba? And that's the thing we have. What, the thing that we have to do is abide in Him. That's what we have to do. First, you know, we have to acknowledge that He is the source. Second, we have to cooperate every time He prunes us. Kahit masakit, okay lang. We know there is something better to look forward to. Diba? But the third, <clears throat> and the third one, is how to have a fruitful life. The third one is let us remain in His Word and in His Spirit. So, diba, you know, you will go through this process of pruning and we know it hurts. But, you know, something that will encourage us to, re- to remain and abide in Him. We remain in His Word. We remain in His Spirit. It says in John 15, 5, later on in that chapter, He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he, it is he that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Very clear. Apart from God, you cannot do anything. John 15, 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. 7. If you abide in me and in my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and you will be done. it will be done for you. And these, in this verse, this verse gets misinterpreted a lot of times. Na, di ba, makita natin, whatever you wish, it will be done for you. Parang, shock, so, pwede go ask, Lord, uh, I want a Ferrari. Let's bigla tomorrow, you'll have a Ferrari. God is not a genie, guys. God is not a, a genie. That's why in verse 7, tingnan natin, in my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done. So, it comes from the source pa rin. It's, it doesn't come from you, eh. Whatever you say, Lord, ito gusto ko, ito yung gusto ko. Hindi. Ano yung gusto ni Lord para sa sa'yo? Yun yung ibibigay niya. If it's in His will, yun yung bibigay niya. If it's in His word, yun yung bibigay. Not because that's what you want. That, that's not how it works. You know, it works because He is the source of that. And for us, we have to remain in His word. So, why His word? Because His word is our hope. In Matthew 24, 35, can we read this together? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So this, this, this earth we have here is very temporary, okay? And the most important thing is that his, world, his word will never pass away. That is our hope. You know, sometimes when we go through pruning, you know, sometimes we don't see the reason why. Why is God doing this in my life right now? Why? But, but, but kinuha niya yung, yung mahal ko, di ba? Pero, Sometimes hindi natin makita yan because yung feelings natin. Pero once, once makita natin, we, we encourage ourselves because of the word. You know, it gives us the courage na, you know what, this is temporary. Everything here is temporary. But your word, your promises, yung promises ni Lord na, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You'll always be there by your side. And you, it's not just our hope. You know what, it's also our guide. In Psalms 119.9, this is one of my favorite verses. I was always share this to my D group. It says here, how can a young man keep his way pure? It is by guarding it according to your word. For me, you know, one of my struggles before and still now, you know, is, you know, as a young man and not just a man, you know, a woman also would, would struggle through lust. And, you know, you would always have these thoughts. You know, when, every time these thoughts come into my mind, I tell my boys and I tell myself to always go back to the word of God because it is the light, you know, the, Again, diba, you guys know that verse, you know, uh, the word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. You know, we live in this dark world and it's sometimes it's so hard to face all those temptations coming in and out and like um, all those um, that sin. But you know, it is our guide. The Bible is our guide. So always keep it near to you. You know, that's why ngayon, digital na tayo ngayon lahat. We, we, have, we have phones so you can just download an app, you know. Keep it near to you because it is our, it is our guide, diba? And it will help us live a fruitful life. So every time may mga temptations, every time may mga, may, mga, may mga trials, we go back to the Word of God, you know? And it will guard us. It will guard us from all the temptations around us. So not just the Word, He also gave us the Spirit. So as we produce fruit, it is not only on our own efforts, but through the Spirit. <clears throat> it says here, God, in the, la- in the previous chapter, in chapter 
14, verse 26, it says here, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my, in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your, remem- to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So the thing is, God just does, does not leave you, know, you with the Bible. Lang. He leaves you also with His Spirit. And that's Him with you. And the thing is, that's what's so beautiful. Now, if you have Christ in your life, when you see that temptation is coming, alam na, no, I have to stay away from it. I have to, I have to follow the, the path of Christ. Diba? And He gives us the Spirit. He gives us the Spirit for us to really be according to His will. You know? That's why kailangan tayo, we have to abide always in Him. And you know, some of the pro, um, produce or the results of us abiding in Christ, this is it, the fruit of the Spirit. It says here, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, Self-control, against such things, there is no law. And for us, sometimes, makita natin, checklist natin to na, do I have love in my life? Do I have joy? Do I have peace? But, you know, sometimes we have to ask, we have to remind ourselves that this is not a qualification, but an evidence of Christ in our life. Okay? This is not a qualification. You know, having, you know, I, you love, it. so, for example, it's not a qualification meaning na, Oh, because I love, I'm a Christian. Because I have peace, I'm a Christian. No, you are a you you have peace, you have joy, you have patience. That's why it's it's not plural, it's not I know, it's singular, fruit. Eh. Because you have all that. If you're a cr- genuine Christian, you have all that. It's a result of your Christian walk. It's a result of your Christian life. And that is why it's not a qualification, but an evidence of your life. So that is why again. We have to abide in Christ. If you want to live a fruitful life, we have to abide in Him. Again, tell your seatmates, abide in Him. Yon. So, next, you know, I want to ask you guys this question. Kuya, Kuya Dar, bakit, why? Why do I have to abide in Christ? Why do I want a fruitful life with Christ? You know, I would see other, yung mga friends ko naman, it looks like they have a fruitful life. Um, ang yaman nila. You know, um, they get everything they want. Um, ang galing nila, they're very talented. It looks like they have the fruitful life. You know, but in, as what Kuya Marty said earlier, that is the world standard. You know, that, that kind of fruitful life, it just withers away. It's not everlasting. But the life that God gives us, if we abide in Him, that's everlasting. Ano yung gusto nyo? Temporary or everlasting? Everlasting, diba? So that is why, that is one reason why it's very important for us to abide in Christ. Another reason why it's important for us to abide in Christ is because Jesus modeled, modeled it himself. John 15:10 in this, in this verse it says, "If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abided in his love." And I was really looking into this while I was reading this chapter. It's very, you know, it's very unique how the Bible is composed. Na all the parables, all the stories, it always leads to one centrality or one part. And it always points back to what Christ did on the cross. Alam mo, God, He abided in His Father. Jesus Christ, He abided in His Father. You know, he, it was supposed, uh, dapat tayo yung nasa cross eh. But you know what? Sobrang yung pagmamahal niya sa atin. He, he's the one who took up that cross because He's the one who, who's sinless. And we, can't, we could never have that um, relationship with Him because of our sin. But you know, Jesus Christ did that. He abided in His Father in order for us to have an abundant life. And that is why one reason why we live and abide in Him. It's because He modeled it. Another one, because of that, because of He modeled it, and, that, and because we have Him in our life, we have complete joy. This is very important. In John 15, 11, it says here, These things... I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be in full. And the thing is, this is something that will never be taken away from you. If you have Christ in you and if you ab- abide in Him, you know, that, could, will, that will never be taken away from you. And that's something, you know, you can never, you know, um, you could never buy, right? It's something 
you have to just always do. It's continuous. It's m- mino. Na you abide in Christ, you abide in Christ continuously, and you will have complete joy. And the next thing, not just joy, you will also have the greatest love of all. John 15, 13, it says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. And that's, it's all about this, guys. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he laid down his life for you and for me. Diba? And the thing is, he calls us friends. Sabi niya dito, John 15, 14, You are my friends if you do what I command you. You know, the thing is, there's two things here we could do this year. You know, there's two things. If you guys want to have a best, the best year, it's either you abide in Him and have a fruitful year or don't abide in Him and you will have not a fruitful year. You won't have a fruitful year. You know, it's as simple as that. But, you know, it's, it's hard. That's why we have to go, we have to remain in His Word, we have to remain in His Spirit. But, you know, it's not, an, it's not impossible. And, I want to encourage you guys na it's, this is not impossible. You know, we could live this fruitful year. Last year, I want to share, you a, st- I want to share a story. It's, um, om- it's, it's been a year that I've been in Elevate in ministry um, as a full-time. Uh, I did training. I started training last year, January. Um, and, you know, before that, I wanted to work in the government. I wanted to um, be in politics. I wanted to serve people in my province. And God opened the door for me. I was supposed to work in agriculture, um, but, you know, God opened the door, and then he closed it. And I was just thinking, Lord, you know, parang, I was so, I was re- ready na. I was ready to build my career in that, in that area. But God took me. God took me away. He pruned me in that area, in my career. He took, he took it away now. Lord, parang, why, why did you take this? Parang, it, it looks good. You know, it's serving, it's serving people. It's loving people. It's loving you. But he had different. He had a different plan. What he did was he made, um, he gave me this opportunity to to serve with full time in him as a campus missionary, and this is when I saw that you know, abide in him and he will abide in us. So all throughout last year, I I would have thoughts na paano yung you know finances ko, you know, because as a full time missionary, you know you don't um, you raise support for your for your ministry. And for me, I was like, Lord, kailan ko pa magreses ng support ganyan. But you know what? Si Christ, if you do your part, if you abide in Him, de ba sabi niya, I will remain in you. And sobrang faithful ni God. You know, I did not deserve this. You know, I, I'm so like, I'm just uh, really humbled na I'm here in front of you because I don't deserve this because you know I'm a sinner. But grabe yung grace ni God sa atin. And you know what he o- what he tells what what he only tells us to do is to abide in him, diba? So I tell your seatmates again, abide in him. Abide in Christ. You know that is, <coughs> you know, And so guys, it's very important. But this year, if you want to live the best year, not just this year. You know, I because uh, minsan you know I don't like that because parang you know as I grew up in a Christian family na parang you know you you living the best year. Tapos bigla, something happens, you go back down. You know, I, I want us to just not live this best year lang, but forever na. And I want you guys to have this commitment today. If you haven't made that commitment today, you know, this is your, this is your chance na. You've heard it. You know, you've, you've heard the gospel. You've heard his word. You've heard the parable, the vine and the branches. And the thing is, you know, he tells us to abide in him. Abide in him. Believe in my promises. I will, I will never leave you, never forsake you. Diba? Three things, three things that we have to remember. How do we build, how do we have, how can we have a fruitful life this year? Three things. First, acknowledge Him. Acknowledge the source. Diba? Second, cooperate when He prunes you. Even though it hurts, don't worry. There will, there is, the best is yet to come. And third, what you have to do, you have to remain in His word and His promise. Again, why do we do this? Why, why this kind of fruitful life? Because it is a life that w- is everlasting. And guys, lahat ng dito in this world is going to be temporary. But a life with Him, a life that is obedient to Him, a life that is abiding in Him, me know, a life like that, that is everlasting. And I hope yun yung choice natin today. You know, turn around, you know. The things that you used to do in the past, 
that are not glorifying to God, let that go. Abide in Christ. Because I don't want you to be that branch that He cuts down and just withers away and, and, and is burned in the fire. And you know, that is a description of hell. I want us, hopefully all of us, to abide in Christ. Again, tell your seatmates, abide in Him. Abide in Him. All right, so let's close this time in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you so much for this time you've given us, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross for our sins, Lord. We don't deserve this, Lord, but yet you've poured out your love to us, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you so much for your word today that we just have to abide in you and you will abide in us. Lord, there are some people here right now that haven't decided or haven't made that choice to abide in you. Lord, may you just penetrate their hearts, their minds right now. Humble them, Lord, that they will acknowledge you. That, Lord, for them to have the best year, they have to acknowledge you. They have to know the source to live a fruitful life this year. And, Lord, may you just touch their hearts. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this your word, Lord. Help us to abide in you despite it's hard. Help us to remain in your word and in your spirit. We love you so much, Lord. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can we just applaud our God for reminding us of, what's our message again? Abide in Him. Can you all stand up? Before we sing our final song, I just want to stress what um, your Kuya Darwin shared earlier. And why we have this as our second topic. Because again, like what I said uh, when I introduced the topic, God wants us to have a fruitful life. And there's a big difference between what the world offers, what fruitfulness is, and what God offers as fruitfulness. And yes, some of you might still argue, well, Kuya Marty, I have classmates. They have a fruitful life. They don't have Jesus. And yeah, they can say that. But again, the big difference is the everlasting. That's one. The big difference is, pag kay Jesus, wala kang talo. Let me repeat that. Pag kay Jesus, wala kang talo. Alam mo ba na that's the only hope na wala kang talo? That's the only, He's the only person na, na panalo ka in the end. Let's say this is a big war. Let's just say, yung world, kampo ng world, okay, this is fruitfulness for us. Okay, ito yun, masaya. We have the money, we have the career, we have all of these things. We have that, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sabi natin, nandun siya. Yan yung kampo ng world. Tapos ito si, si Manny Pacquiao, kasi Christian siya. So ito si, may laban siya bukas. But anyway, let's just say, ito yung kampo ni Jesus Christ. Ito yung offer niya. Fruitfulness, joy, love, peace. And syempre, yung world din, may sinasabi, oh, this is joy, love, peace. So, maglalaban yan. Ganyan naman nangyari ngayon eh. That's why a lot of people, they don't want to follow the, the, the path of Jesus. Kasi may obedience factor dun eh. Hindi sila yung nasusunod dito eh. I mean, let's be honest, diba? pag nandito ka, sino nasusunod? Sino nasusunod dito? Sino nasusunod? Sino? Si Lord. Now, let's be honest, gusto ba natin lagi nasusunod si Lord? Minsan parang ayaw natin eh. Kasi nga, tulad sinabi ni Darwin, may tatanggalin siya. May tatanggalin siyang relationship, may tatanggalin siyang habit mo, may tatanggalin siyang addiction mo, may tatanggalin siyang friends, may tatanggalin siyang whatever. Ayaw natin yun. Pero sa dulo, if you compare that, dito lagi kang panalo. Parehong path, parehong ka masasaktan. Let's just say, nandun ka sa world. Sinusunda mo yung ways nila. Naka-experience ka ng happiness. Pero masasaktan ka rin. Naka-experience ka relationship, masasaktan ka rin dito. Dito ganun din. Naka Jesus ka. Let's say, nag-disobey ka, nagkaroon kang relationship, nagkaroon kang girlfriend. Pero nandun ka kay Jesus, nirebew ka, pinroon ni Lord. Masasaktan ka rin. So parehong masasaktan. But at the end of everything else, let me just stress this point. Please guys, let me just stress this point to you. At the end of everything else, doon panalo ka. Because you're gonna go with Him in heaven. He's the only person who can provide fruitfulness for the rest of eternity. Doon ka panalo. Wala kang talo kay Jesus. Can you just applaud our God for that wonderful promise? Kasi never mong makukuha yan sa world. Never mong makukuha yan sa any other religious person only kay Jesus Christ. And that's why this is our topic, the best year yet. Some of you haven't received Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you are our guest. You got invited here. You don't have that relationship. My prayer is that you humble yourself. 
You cannot go to heaven with the world standard. Hindi kaya yun. That's why Jesus Christ came to die for your sins and my sins, so that when we receive Him as our Lord and Savior, eto possibility. You'll have eternal life. So if you're that person, you humble yourself. Now, if you're a Christian already, alam mo naman tong message na to. Eh. My challenge to you, or my question to you, are you abiding in Him? Connected ka ba sa Kanya? Babasa ka ba ng Bible? Are you pursuing Him? Are you growing in your relationship? Seryoso ka ba? Kasi kung hindi, then there's a big problem. Then there's a big disconnect. I don't think the joy, the peace can be very evident this year in your life if you are not abiding in Jesus. So can I just pray for you? And then afterwards, we're gonna sing this song. Lord God, thank you so much for speaking to all of us. Thank you, Lord, for that reminder that we are to abide in you. Lord, we've read this passage many times for a lot of us here. But maybe for some of us, this is the first time mas naintindihan namin yung passage about abide. It means meno. It means to stay, to remain. Lord, for some of the people here, they don't have a relationship with you. I pray that you humble them. You remind them na sa inyo, laging pan- in, at the end, pag nasa inyo kami, panalo. Maybe, of course, may pain pa rin, may mga challenges, may mga tough times. Pero at the end, panalo eh. So I pray that those people who doesn't have a relationship with you, this will be that day that they will receive you as their Lord and Savior. And that they'll humble themselves. I pray that they'll approach someone. Maybe they go to the welcome center later. Talk to someone so that they'll hear the one true gospel. And for us, majority of us, the may relationship na. Christians na kami, Lord. Alam na namin tong message na to. I pray that this year will be the, a year of abiding. A year of surrender. A year of constant connection remaining in you, in your spirit. It's not gonna be easy. We cannot do this on our own, but that's why you are there. Lord, we will not have power. We will not have the strength if we are not always connected.